So here's the most common question that I get asked. What kind of pen do you use? And that's a big question. Because I love pens and I own a ridiculous number of pens and I've been in love sequentially with so many different ones. So today I want to take you through my pen collection and tell you about the ones that I use the most and uh, to show you how they work. So hold on to your wallet because you might find that you want to go out and buy some of these pens. None of them are magic though. None of them are magic. They all are basically make black lines on paper, but I don't know. I'm always looking for the perfect one. Maybe you are too. I have, I have pens all over the place. I have pens uh, in jars and I have pens in boxes. I have pens in drawers like this. I have this entire fishing tackle box full of different pens, which kind of categorized in drawers so that I can find the right one at the right time. I have a whole storage area, which is full of unopened pens as backups. And I have pens attached to my desk here. I have little rolling carts with pens in different compartments. It just goes on and on and on. Here's the very first pen that I ever used to draw with. It is a Uniball. And I got it from the supply closet at work. And it is, it's still a nice pen. I still like to use it. It is waterproof. It is, uh, it's fairly smooth because it has a roller ball. It has a, just a little bit of a kind of scratchiness to it. And there's certainly times that that is what I want to use. The, uh, I want to have that feeling of resistance in the paper. I'll put links to all of these pens down below so you can see them. For a long time, I used these pens. These are Micron Pigma from Sakura, and they come in lots of different sizes. They are archival ink. They are waterproof. They are very, very nice pens, not expensive. The ink at least lasts for a long time. And the pens themselves um, are fairly durable. There's some that I struggled with sometimes. I think it was particularly the O2, which I didn't necessarily love. And it would, it would tend to get bulky sometimes, but they do go all the way up to the 08. If you want to, you can, you can watercolor on top of them and the lines won't run. They are permanent. I don't love these caps. So the caps are small and, um, they all just look so similar that sometimes you can struggle a bit with trying to find the size they have. The number is there on the top of each one, but it can be a bit small. These are just minor nits that I have with it, but they're good pens. I would definitely recommend them if you want to try a fine liner. In the past year or so, I've been using these pens that are from Germany and that they just came to the United States, or at least I just discovered them here the Edding 1880. And um, they come in every conceivable size. 05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0.8. And this one is a 1.0. For some reason, there's no 0.9. But I've survived nonetheless. So, uh, you know, if I compare these pens to the Micron, they're sort of similar, sort of similar size. But... There's something about the way that the, these lids come on and off that I find easier. And, um, I don't know. I just like, I like the look of the pen itself better than the micron and the, you know, ink wise, I find that they're very similar. And, uh, so this is an editing 08 goes on nice and smoothly as does this, as does the Pigma. Pigma just has a slightly more metal feeling. I don't know what it is. I think, I think this is what it comes down to. You see the very tip of these pens and how the, the black part sticks out just a little tiny bit more. And that makes it, you're not writing on the metal at all. Cause that's something I don't love is when you're drawing and you get onto the edge of the, of the pen and you feel that metal tip rubbing against the paper. Yeah, you see that? You see how it's, it becomes sort of thinner. Yeah. 
But anyway, good pen. Both good pens. You use as many pens as I have. When you go through as many pens, you start to notice these little tiny details. It's sort of like being like a, I don't know, like a professional race car driver or something like that, or a guitarist where you just like the little tiny things bug you. These things may or may not bother you. You may not, may not care, but these are the things that I think about. Wow. This is another kind of pen that I have just relied on for a really long time. It was difficult to get in the United States, but now you can get them pretty much anywhere. You can certainly get them on Amazon and they're really fantastic. Let me show you why. These are Tombow. They're from Tombow, which makes a lot of uh, kind of brush markers. They are called calligraphy pens, um, but they're also in Japanese, they're called Fudnasuke, I think, which is basically, I think, the word for brush pen. And they come in the, just these two different sizes. One is called the BH, which is for hard, and the other one is called the WSBS, which is for soft. Here's what I like about these pens so much, is when you're drawing with them, they're unlike the regular fine liners, which just give you a very straight line. This one you can push and you can get this kind of variation in your line, right? So you can be drawing and then suddenly you just decide that you want to have something thicker. You just need to press a little bit and it does that. And again, the ink is the same kind of archival waterproof ink that you get in other quality fine liners. So that was the soft one. This is the hard one. This hard one is actually about to die on me. I don't know if I have a separate one. I go through these things quite a lot, but yeah, so this one is, is it's just a little harder. I honestly prefer the soft ones, which are the green ones to the blue ones, but really good pens, the Tombow Fudensuke uh, fine liner. Right now let's go beyond fine liners and talk about other kinds of pens that I really love to use. And um, the first, of course, is a fountain pen. And this is my favorite fountain pen. Um, I have lots of them, and I mark them here to say what size nib I have on it. Lamy Safari. And it is, a, it is a fountain pen. It uses replaceable ink cartridges. And it is, uh, this ink, these ink cartridges are not waterproof. Again, I love these lines. They're fairly consistent. Uh, the super black, and it just goes on so I mean, writing with this pen, this is my favorite pen to write with. It's so nice, but it is wet ink, so you can do that to it. It dries in a few seconds, but, and if you put some water on it, there's a crazy brush, but you can see that's what can happen to it. So I don't use this doing drawings that I'm going to use uh, watercolor with, but you can, if you want to be clever about it, you can replace the innards of this with what's called a converter, which is a thing that allows you to basically put waterproof ink in it, not India ink. I've talked about this quite a lot. You don't want to put India ink, which has shellac into a fountain pen. It will destroy it, but there are some types of ink and probably the one that I would suggest you try, if you want to try this is uh, platinum carbon ink. If you, if you want to be absolutely sure, that you put a line down on paper and you're going to watercolor over it and you don't have any problems of any kind, I probably wouldn't use a fountain pen. I would just go with one of these fine liners, one of these technical pens. You can work your way around it. It's, it's a lot of trouble and I'm not sure that you really will get huge benefits out of it. It's up to you. Here's a whole box of my fountain pens. This is lots of them are Lamy Safaris. I get them in different colors and uh, they're lots of fun, but I also have all kinds of more exotic ones. And uh, this is what a pen looks like when it has a converter stuck into it. So a converter means that you can use this pen to, and you can just pop the converter out and you can put a cartridge back in. And I have extra converters, they're not expensive. So you can buy those if you want to. This is another pen that I use an awful lot. It is a Pentel brush pen. So it is a pen and it's a brush. So you see that? That is a brush. So there you get incredible variation. So it's really, if you've ever thought about drawing or try drawing with you know, a brush dipped in ink, this gives you that effect. But of course you can carry it in your pocket 
And uh, there's also a bunch of like exotic ones. They came out with this whole series of these Pentel brush pens. This one is designed to look like water. And I have several other that are still in the box. Like this one is designed to look like wood. And here's one that's designed to look like marble. And here's yet another one that's designed to look like bamboo. So they have black pigment ink, fade and water resistant, which is great. Again, you can watercolor over it. Um, the ink dries pretty quickly. You see there, it's already dry. A lot of times after I've been drawing with a fine pen, I just want to loosen up. I want to just kind of get crazy. And something like this Pentel brush pen lets me do that. It just allows me to have lines that are a bit more un unpredictable, that are bolder, make a stronger statement, um, or have a flow to them. And drawing with a brush is just a very different experience from drawing with a pen. I love both of them. And then the final pen that I use an awful lot that I'm just sort of addicted to is the dip pen. So the dip pen has a lot of wonderful benefits to it. It is a tool that artists have used for <clears throat> literally hundreds of years. It is basically a piece of metal stuck into a stick. In this case, it is a, a wooden stick with cork here. This is what a newer one looks like. Um, the Kohenor from Germany. This, this is the best one. They're not expensive, about $7. And then these nibs are also not expensive. You buy them in a box, of five or 10, for, I don't know, they're, like, they're less than a dollar a piece, I think, for this thing. And this particular nib is called the G nib. Uh, I think it's because if you look at it from the profile, it looks a bit like a G. And um, they're made by a bunch of different companies. I like the Zebra G nibs. And you, know, you dip it into the ink, and then when you draw or write with it, you get, again, this incredible variation. You know, it's beautiful for writing with, but also you can do all kinds of drawings with I've done many, many drawings with this. And um, you're using India ink, which will dry and be permanent, so you can watercolor over it. Uh, it takes, you know, a, bit of, a little bit of getting used to, it is, and you, you know, you dip, you don't have to dip all the time. That's one of the nice things about the G is the G is designed. It has these slots that when you f dip it into the ink, it fills it up. You see, so that's filled up. And that is basically a reservoir that is going to hold that ink for a good long time. And you're going to get a lot of, a lot of mileage out of a single dip. And I, I really like the feeling of it on paper. You know, you have to be a bit more careful with it than, you know, if you get your finger on it, it takes a little bit longer to dry. But again, not long. Right. So I've probably done more to confuse you than anything else at this point. The question is, what pen should I use? So let's go, let me just summarize and give you my final recommendations. So for me, I drew with this pen for three years, maybe, maybe longer. This is the pen that I learned to draw with. So simple, uniball. One of the most widely available pens would be one of these, which is a Micron. My recommendation would be buy a Micron 01 and maybe an 05, so you have some variation. I'm also a big fan these days of these um, editing pens. And, you know, again, you could buy yourself uh, an 01 and an 05. They come in a set, actually. Most, both of these kinds of pens do come in a set, so you might get more than one but I would say two or three is good enough. So I would start there. And then another recommendation, perhaps the next step up, would be these food and suitcases from Tombow. And then finally, I would buy myself a Pentel brush pen. So the Pentel brush pen is just such a fantastic thing to play with, but I would not start there. Definitely don't start there. Work your way up towards this and then I think you will be ready for the joys of drawing with, with a brush pen. In the end, it's not the pen that makes the art, it's the artist. So whatever pen you have at hand, make sure you use it a lot. And, uh, you know, pens are cheap, paper is cheap, go through a lot of them. But different pens just feel slightly different, like different kinds of shoes, uh, different strokes for different folks, I would say. It's fine to go out and invest in three or four different brands or different types, but now you have a general sense of what you're looking for at the art supply store. 
buy yourself a few different ones, see what feels right for you. And frankly, you might also find that what feels kind of not right today may end up being your perfect, most favorite pen later on. Tastes change, our abilities change, the things that we want from our tools matures or zigs and zags. So that's why having lots of pens is kind of part of what we do as artists. Even if you settle on one, chances are you may want to play around and try others over time. I hope this has been helpful. If you have any pens that you'd like to recommend, please do so in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to know what you're using, and I'm sure the rest of the viewers would be interested in learning from your experience too. Enjoy yourself and have fun drawing.